Welcome back. We've been looking at the hit Canadian comedy Little Mosque on the Prairie and its global appeal. Recently, the show announced it would be taking on a oh, new market, the U.S. So as Little Mosque goes Hollywood, will it resonate with American audiences and can it help to break down barriers? Joining me from Toronto to discuss this is the show's executive producer, Mary Darling. Mary is also CEO of the West Wind Pictures Group, which owns the uh, program. She brokered the deal with 20th Century Fox and will work with the Hollywood studio to bring Little Mosque on the Prairie to the U.S. market. And from New York, I'm joined by Mahiad Tusi, an independent filmmaker and CEO and co-founder of Boom Gen Studios. Boom Gen works to assist uh, emerging film artists from the Middle East. And I want to welcome you both to the program. And Mary, congratulations on the success of that deal with 20th Century Fox. What are the next steps in getting this show uh, onto the, uh, the U.S. screens? Well, thanks, first of all, for having me, Riz. It's a real pleasure to be here. I think the next steps for getting it on the screens in the U.S. is just getting our writers attached to it and getting them writing. And in terms of uh, the, the changes that will be involved to make it more appealing to the U.S. market, how does that work out? The changes, that's been the most interesting conversation with 20th Century Fox Studios, and that's just incorporating how the American Muslim experience is different than the Canadian Muslim experience. And one of the primary differences really is the uh, larger population of the African American Baha'i community, or the African American Muslim community in, uh, in the U.S. It's a much different, um, a di enough, uh, nice. different groundwork there, different community in some ways. Well, Mahiyad, in your opinion, will this, uh, will this uh, program work for an American audience, this concept? Uh, nice to be on, and congratulations to Mary for, uh, for the deal. Um, I, I, I absolutely think uh, it's going to work. I, in fact, this is what we do uh, in, in BoomGen, is, is we, we, we work to make sure programs like this work. And, and, and it's actually working. So we already have uh, a lot of uh, Middle Eastern, North, North African, uh, Pakistani people from the Muslim world, from Islamic cultures that are succeeding as comedians in, in making people laugh in this country and all over the world. Uh, and there's examples of it already in action. And what it comes down to, I think, more than uh, whether the, the uniqueness of the show is more that is can the show compete in the market on the same level. Right. And that's, uh, and as, yeah. as I'm sure Mayor is fully aware, is all about the writing and the quality of the show. And it has to, it has to be able to succeed on that level. Well, let's get a call in from the UK. We have Judith on the line. Judith, what's your question, please? Uh, well, it's a comment, but okay. it's a question too. Uh, I, 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 we have a big Asian population, therefore a Muslim po population here. Much criticism of 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 of, of, of Muslim tradi traditional practices, and you were you were making comedy about um, about uh, arranged marriages and how how the. Uh, other side, the American side was just not going to, were making fun of that. That's great. The Canadian side, I should say. Were, mm. But I, I would like to point out that this is a, an interesting, um, there is an interesting converse to this. In the West, we have in divorce rates and all that follows from that. And we have to deal with that. And there's comedy about that too, but it's also tragic. So there's tragedy on both sides. Neither one, to my mind, right. is better than the other. Well, uh, actually, Mahiad, how, how can that cultural sensitivity be ensured? I mean, what, how important is it to make sure? You say you're promoting, obviously, these kind of things, but how do you ensure that there's cultural sensitivity that won't alienate uh, viewers from the show? I mean, I think I think uh, you you can't really focus too much on whether you're you know you can't be afraid. You know, I think art at the end of the day, entertainment is this is what we do, and we need to be bold about what we do, and we need to and and what we do is two things. You know, I, I think there's two things that are happening here. A, you're trying to create bridge gaps, but you're also creating a, a medium for introspection. And I think at best, with all mediums, with all comedies, with all dramatic forms uh, of motion pictures, you want to do both things. You want to be able to educate, but you want also to be able to look at yourself and uh, and 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 those are I hope things that the caller was picking up on is that look while while it's talking about these issues such as arranged marriages and the hijab etc it's also providing a medium for the community to look at itself and to look at to examine right. itself and, and I think that's the triumph of the show and why it was successful in Canada because it was honest in both directions and I hope they will continue to do the same in this uh, in the U.S. and push it even further along. Right. Um, and I don't think they have to worry about anything. Well, we had an email I'd like to put to you, Mary, and it came in from uh, Michael in Michigan in the U.S. And uh, Michael wrote okay. in saying, are there any differences in how the show is perceived in different countries? Does the show shed any light on the tolerance level of these countries? Have you been able to track that information at all? Well, we've tracked it a bit. I think that in selling around the world and talking to the buyers of the various, in the various um, 
territories, it's been interesting because what's different about this show as compared to a show like The Office, when you're off selling a, a show like that, is that in each and every country that we find ourselves in, the, the Islamic community is either integrated more so or less so, or they have greater uh, restrictions placed on them or lesser restrictions placed on them. And so what we really needed to, to do in order to create a show that rang in its authenticity was to focus on where we're making the show, the place being Canada, and just letting it ring authentically in the region that we're making it for. And then, and then the other regions um, can look at it instead of, instead of the Muslim or non-Muslim communities thinking that it's somehow supposed to be representing them specifically, they're able to look at it in, in terms of you know, what, is the, what is the situation in North America, how much do we understand that, and obviously we just right. try to stick to representing it. I, um, but I, I, think, I think it'd really pull us off if we did different than that. I want to uh, show a video clip of the uh, the show where a, a sensitive issue of like haircuts with hijabs is touched on. So let's let's have viewers see this scene. Yeah. <laughs> you, me, haircuts. What do you say? I'd say you need some verbs in that sentence. But yes. So does that mean you're coming? It might. Goody. Uh, wait. Uh, how do you ladies get a haircut when you know men aren't supposed to see your uh, hair? It's okay. You can't see our hair, but you can say it. Sorry. So really, how do you cut your uh, hair? <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. We go to Marsha's salon. She has blinds on her windows. Is that a secret? No, we're making fun of you. <laughs> now, Mary, I know, of course, you have to think about the sensitivities. <laughs> who, who, who are you getting in to, uh, <laughs> to advise on the, the, the sort of cu uh, cultural and, and religious sensitivities of Islam for the, uh, for the U.S. series? Oh. Well, uh, you know, obviously in the Canadian series, we have Zarka Nawaz, who's the creator of the, of the Canadian series. And Zarka will be continuing to give input on the American series as well. And then we're actually speaking with many different Muslim organizations as well as just individual stand-up Muslim, you know, comedians in uh, people who have traveled a lot around the, the world. Uh, and we're, we're consulting with them. So we haven't nailed down exactly who our consultancy staff will be in the U.S., but. Uh, I sure have been meeting some amazing people. Any of ma many of them would work. Now, Mahia, just a quick thought. Uh, when it comes to the authenticity of the characters and the need to, to be authentic, when it comes to the, the culture and the religion and everything else, how important is that to, to really make it work? Uh, it's very important, but it's also important to be funny for this show, and it's important to be. Uh, um, it's, it's important that it's well written, that that it can also, you know, that it recognizes its audience, that it that it. Uh, but what's more important than anything else, I think, is how the show is presented and how the show, as every show is in, in, that is made for television, nothing is made in a, in, without thinking about all right, who is the core audience and how do we reach this core audience and, right. th and through them That's reach right. a wider audience. And so this so uh, it has to be a, this, a very, very whole strategy okay. that attacks all of these things from creating it to promoting it. Well, listen, Mahiad uh, Tusi and Mary Darling, I want to thank you very much for talking to us and good luck with the show uh, in the U.S., Mary. Thank Pleasure. you very much, Riz, again. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. On Monday, we talk with a controversial environmentalist who often takes matters dramatically into his own hands in order to save the world's oceans. Send us your thoughts. That's it from me and the team. We'll see you next time. <laughs>